Ja, lidt igen, ikke? Ja. God morgen, god morning. Guten morgen. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Ja, hvad kan vi altså finde på? Ni hao. Så kan vi stikke finde på flere. Um, welcome to this third lecture on introductory statistics. Uh, I'll begin today. I'll do that sometimes, not every time. Sometimes when I find it suitable, I'll begin with a bit of repetition of some of what went on earlier on. Otherwise, if you need repetition, it's very easy for you to go look at the podcasts. But still, sometimes it's nice to link what we're going to do to to day to some of what we've done previously. So last week, this is the overview of last week, where the title was Discrete Distributions, basically. We see the word here. So we were doing a bit of probability related to the discrete world. Discreteness is something, well, roughly you could say that's whenever we register something that we can count. It's not a mathematically exact definition, but uh, this is Related in statistics, it's related to when we observe systems where we count something. It can be a binary count, only 0, 1, or it can be a large count uh, of something very, very large. <laughs> um, we saw that there was a general framework for dealing with random systems, uh, random discrete systems. That's sort of the generic part. There is a mathematical framework for it. There is something called... Uh, stochastic or random variables, there is something called density function and distribution function that sort of are the names of the probabilities in the system. Since it's a random system, we need to know probabilities to know the system. That's, uh, that's the core of this. Then, that was the abstract part. Then we met three specific such, you could call them uh, random systems, or maybe rather probability models for something that hopefully is out there in the real world. The binomial, the hypergeometric, and the Poisson. Three different sort of uh, models for random systems. Then we went more um, abstract again and discussed that even generically in random systems, we can talk about sort of the average expectation, the mean in a system, and the variability in a system. Uh, seen as a random uh, sort of abstract thing. And we could find mean and variances in specific systems also, you could say. I use this word system now. I kind of like that at the moment. And then we looked at R. Probability theory. Let me, that's uh, as much as I would take here. I would then go into R to repeat a bit of what we saw last time. Both remember, remind us that we could do it in R. The probability, the binomial distribution, for instance, is in R. So we can play around with it, all different features of it. For instance, we could, we could toss 20 times with an asymmetric coin with a 0.7 probability of uh, coming up heads, right? That's the sort of the coin tossing situation. Then the, the nice feature about... Uh, R, one of the nice features was that we could ask R to do it 100 times. Here is R doing it 100 times for us. And, uh, well, here's 100 times more. So it's easy to make uh, the computer simulate random coin tosses. So it's 100 times 20 courses, the, uh, tosses. Um, and then we could use the histogram function of R to get a picture of how would the binomial distribution look if we look at the frequency, or that is also a sort of a picture of the density function, the individual uh, relative frequencies or absolute frequencies. Now we were also taught a couple of things regarding mean and variance. There was a theoretical concept that I said that a minute ago. We could compute mean and variance in random systems in general. We can compute mathematically We can extract what is the mean and the variance in the binomial system. And that, that was a result that I told you that the mean of the binomial system was n times p. So if I throw 20 times with a 0.7 coin, on average, I expect 14 outcomes. Pretty obvious to most of us, I hope. Um, 
and the theory follows the obviousness here. Now, what would be maybe less obvious was to have an idea of, theoretically, when I do, let me do that again up here, I randomly toss 100 times, 20 coins, 100 times. Look at the numbers. Sometimes 14, sometimes 15, 12, 17, 9. There is a variability in the binomial system, right? The binomial system is different from time to time. That's the, that's the heart of the key of a random system. Now, one way of expressing this variability is by means of the variance. The variance is the average squared deviation, or the average squared uh, deviation from the mean. How different can we be? The theoretical result last time I, was, I gave you on a slide was this one. If we know it's a binomial with an n and a p, we can compute the variance by mathematical theory. And the variance would be 4.2. That is, then the standard deviation would be around 2, 2.1 or something. The square root of the variance. Just to show you that this is correct, now I simulate R for random, R binom. I simulate 1,000 such coin tosses on, in R, and then I use the the built-in variance function that you played around with two weeks ago on day one. Can I compute a variance on some numbers? You computed variances on school grades. Now I compute the variance on 1,000 outcomes of the binomial in the computer. Here it is. The variance is 4.3. And next time it's 4.5. Next, Whoa, it's, it's jumping here, sorry. I should go... Struggling with my shortcuts here, 4.0, 4.0. It's not exactly the same because 1,000, the variance of 1,000 outcomes will change a little bit from time to time. But it's around 4.2. We can see it fits with the theory. When we know the theory, we don't have to do this on the computer. We don't have to sit down ourselves and throw 20 coins 1,000 times. That would take a long time, a few hours, to actually find it out ourselves. Here we can find out Thank you. We are going to recap connection here. Patience is a good thing. Are we here? I think we're here. Jebe, are we here? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Similar, similarly, we could do using the Poisson. Let me jump here. Uh, we could play around with the Poisson distribution with an intensity of seven events during some time period like seven uh, hits on a website within an hour could be. So we have a model for modeling uh, how many hits do we have on this website per hour. That would be something that could be interesting if you deal with websites and you're going to sell commercials on your website. You, you would want to know something about that. Um, we could uh, simulate 100 such per songs, 100, uh, 100 one-hour periods. Here are 100 one-hour periods uh, going from sometimes only two hits, other times up to 16 hits. Such a Poisson has a variability and a mean. Do you remember what the mean and the variance is in a Poisson? Lambda. It's, it's beautifully simple. Seven. Let's see if it fits mean variance. Whoa, it fits. I actually took 1,000 Poisson's outcomes and computed the variance and computed the mean, and it fits. Well, this shows nicely that uh, we can use th theory is quite strong here. It also shows that this simulation tool is quite strong because if we're dealing with something more complicated, which we don't know the theory of, it's very easy to do the simulation. We'll get back to that very heavily later in the course. Now, 
This was a bit of recap on the binomial and the Poisson in, in R. As I said last time, probability theory and uh, simulating and working with probability models is a strong and important tool in its own right. Not necessarily as such having anything directly to do with statistics. I mean, you can play around with these things in models without necessarily calling yourself a statistician. There are many models and things going on in queuing theory and other stuff that are very important. However, let me give you a bit of hints why it's also important for us in a statistics course to be able to deal with such thinking of randomness and variability. I'm going to throw up very briefly just two of the stories on my link here. One of them is only given in Danish, but still, let me just recap. It's a nice story. Here it says that our Øresundsbro, uh, which is the bridge to Sweden that was built a few years ago. Uh, this is a five-year-old news, so you can call it old. But uh, back then it was a new news. Um, and here it was said that our bridge was... Uh, Frequent was uh, English word for frequent. Sorry? Free of charge, thank you. Was freed of charge for actually bothering the eels in. Do we say Ursun? I guess it's the name, whether we speak English or Danish. It's Ursun. It's the, it's the belt, it's the strait between Denmark and Sweden, for those of you who are not local. This uh, strait, we have the bridge, and. The thing is that the Swedish fisheries and uh, environmental authorities, Fiskeriverket, they had a, had a contract with the consortium building the bridge that they were going to check whether the bridge were damaging the environment. And in this case, it was the presence of eels in, in our belt, in, in Öresund. And they were suing the bridge consortium for, I think, 500 million or something like that. Half a billion. Um, because they had a report showing that the number of eels had decreased dramatically. Number of eels. Number of eels follow, if you model them correctly, Poisson distributed uh, distributions. And if you analyze data, and that, that is where the <laughs> thing comes in. Here are some data on the presence of eels. The data tells you something, maybe. Here's a decision to be made. Are these data telling us that something dramatically changed? Did the bridge actually ruin the presence of eels, or did it not? We have to make a decision. The only uh, evidence we have is looking at data, looking at the presence of eels, and then we can hear on biologists uh, trying to interpret those data and, and be uh, experts. They had a report showing that the eel presence had gone down dramatically. Then my colleague, Professor Henrik Splitt, professor in statistics, sitting next door to me, also is still, um, he was called in. He did a, a new analysis of this data using the Poisson distribution, uh, acknowledging variability from the Poisson and acknowledging many other things, which is important when you analyze data. I mean, uh, he needed to use a bit more than I'm teaching you in this course, but it, it was the Poisson distribution that was used. And he came up with a pretty, pretty and very clear conclusion. Yes, the eels has dropped, but no, it cannot have anything to do with the bridge because it dropped anywhere else. I mean, that was a very roughly what you could say that it's a, of course, it's a biological disappointment, uh, but it has nothing to do with the bridge. So the bridge was freed. He was called, he was a, a, an expert witness in this, uh, in this case, and they were actually freed. So, we were not the taxpayers having to pay half a billion extra to the Swedish environmentalists. Of course, we should have if the numbers had been conclusive in their way, but they were not. It, the, the, the statistical analysis was the key uh, point in uh, coming up with that. Let me show you one other little story that is also using, it can maybe use binomial, it can use Poisson, I'm trying to find it again here. And that is also in English. That's the ever, or the ever ongoing discussion, I think you could say, on whether 
we are going to die of cancer, all of us, much previously than otherwise, because we have this stupid phone on our ear constantly. Um, and there's been major studies on this issue. Um, and the Danes had a quite a large study. And the Swedish, some Swedish doctors, they criticized the Danes heavily and called it, what a crap research. And then, you know how a doctor of medicine reacts if you call his research crap. And uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm not going to dig into this discussion. This, uh, which, this is a classical scientific paper that the, that the papers are then referring to, uh, I mean, the journal. Uh, Regular newspapers would refer to something like that. I'm just going to show you a little bit here. As a result of such an important study, it's, it's claimed that a total of so many cancers were observed. We were following 420,000 people. We are counting how many cancer cases are there. So we are counting things. Could be Poisson, could be binomial, depending on how you set up the situation. Then you look at the numbers and you say, for instance, altogether, it's only 95%, this is this point, 95% of what you would expect in the total population. So basically, you take two numbers and divide them by each other. How many cancers in the group that you're following, how many are sort of the average, the expected number in the population? That's the SIR number. Then you use theory from binomial and or Poisson, depending on how you look at it, to come up with some ideas of variability of this. That's the whole issue. To use this for something, we need to know about variability. And then they come, this is something that we are going to be taught in this course in a few weeks, a couple of weeks, the confidence interval, which is the, the standard way. I, I'll tell you in two weeks what it is. It's just, but it's a way of conveying variability. That's the short story. Is like this. And you can see this is used throughout different types of cancers, and then a confidence interval. We use the theoretical knowledge of variability from the probability theory models to put into intervals when we have to make decisions about our future, about whether or not we should believe in whether, cancer, whether the cellular phone use uh, is a risk factor for cancer or not. We use those methods and these ideas explicitly. Everyone used them. In this course, you're going to be taught what these methods are. No one with an academic degree can live can exist without knowing about these things. This is, uh, I mean, basic knowledge for everyone with a master's degree in basically anything, I would claim. Maybe some people in Danish or philosophy would disagree, but um, I mean, all such degrees that uh, give money to the society. You need to know about <laughs> st statistics. Um, sorry to the rest of you. I'm going to get into trouble anyway. This was the recap, a, a pretty comprehensive recap this time. So let's go on with the first real part. So we make a, 